and to have changed the result manifold. I want to show you just a few highlights of the Zoll Auto Plus and Mechanical CPR device. This is a quick carry case that we carry our device in. This picture of this body on here it just shows that um, as you're preparing this for deployment, this is ahead of the board. It's also got backpack straps you can pour it on your back to carry it in. If we look at the actual landscape of the board, you'll notice at the very top we have a picture of an arrow, a picture of a head, and the shoulder outline. These again are just indicators that this is ahead of the board as you're preparing it for deployment. The only alignment marking that we have on our platform is this yellow line, which should fall in the armpit of your cardiac arrest patient. That would then match up with this light band, this low distribution band that also has a yellow line on it. So as you're placing this on top of your patient's chest, this band should be at 90 degrees. The buttonology on our device, our on-off button is at the very top end of the board here, indicated by this on-off symbol. You've got three buttons that you're going to work with on the control panel. This green button, once you place your patient on top of the board, this light band is all close together. You place that on top of the patient's chest. The infomercial moment is set and forget it. And once we hit the green button, that band will come down. The device will pause for three seconds. And that three second pause is designed for you as a provider to be able to sit back and look at your patient to make sure they're properly aligned on the platform. For example, the yellow line is in the armpit. <laughs> One thing that sets us apart from our competition and our manual CPR is that this black bar, there are two load cells in here. So as you saw that band coming down, those load cells are measuring that patient's chest. And so every cardiac arrest patient we put inside this platform gets a customized compression. We reduce the, the chest wall circumferentially, 20% anterior to posterior. So if we describe that, um, I ask you to think about a sponge and putting it in the bucket of water. And if I pull the sponge out, we would all grab that sponge when we bring it out. It's the same concept with this light band of how we're able to compress the chest wall and able to get all four chambers of the heart. So the effect of that clinically is that we're moving your normal blood flow. So if you compare that to a manual CPR, manual CPR provides about 25 to 40%. A piston-driven device on the market moves about 30% blood flow. But again, because we circumferentially squeeze the chest wall, we're able to move three times the amount of blood flow or near normal. So again, as I place the patient down on top of the board, Set the band on top, hit the green button. This shoulder harness is what we use to secure the patient down on top of those load cells. There's also a safety mechanism that is built inside of this platform that says if that patient would migrate on the board or if that 20% reduction would change, the safety technology inside of this device says, I'm going to stop for you. And historically, the reason why that board stops for that patient migrates is because we have failed to secure that patient down properly. This shoulder harness simply goes over top of your patient's head. This yellow strap will match up where your landmark is for your patient on the platform. So this goes underneath the patient's armpit. And when we go to secure, we always secure the yellows first. back when we do the blacks and then we ask our providers just to double check it by putting their fingers underneath this navy strap. Once that patient is secured down, the auto pulse with the quick carry case is a resuscitation on the move so by securing that patient down with the shoulder harness it allows you to set that patient up to help to extricate a patient upstairs, downstairs, going around the banisters, on the uh, stairs. Uh, if you're limited, if your department has limited resources, we certainly can put this auto pulse inside of a stair chair to extricate a patient down. <clears throat> this quick carry case, you get on the bottom part of this, this pulls out underneath the patient. There's another seat belt here that will allow you to secure that patient down on top of the platform here. And again, with this resuscitation on the move, this quick carry case allows you to twist and turn and uh, extricate your patient. But most importantly, there's no interruption in blood flow during your transport uh, extrication down from upstairs to downstairs, downstairs to upstairs, putting them in the back of the truck. Again, the safety aspect of this allows your provider to sit down and be safe. Again, continuing the most important medicine today in the treatment of cardiac arrest, which is blood flow.
<clears throat> a couple other features on here, which you'll see on your control panel here, this gray button. The boards from the factory will power up in a 30 to 2 compression ventilation ratio. So on compression 28, 29, and 30, the device will provide audible prompts for you so the ventilator can kind of prepare for that three second pause to ventilate two ventilations. <clears throat> so again, it's just simply by pressing that gray, that gray button once and then placing it or confirming it the second time. I press it once. And confirm it. You see that I'm in continuous mode as an effort part of the uh, control panel. In a continuous mode, the auto pulse will provide a audible prompt about every eighth compression there, again, as a, as a guide to help the ventilator slow down as they're ventilating. The orange button on the device, this is our pause button. So as you're preparing for a pulse check rhythm check, you can simply push the orange button to pause it. I'll show you an example of that. There's also a clock running on the control panel there, so it's just another guide to help you um, show you or to indicate how long you've been working your cardiac arrest when your next pulse check rhythm check is coming up. Another nice feature on the auto pulse is that when you pause the auto pulse for your, for example, your pulse check rhythm check, that running clock will reset and it will start counting up. At the 10 second mark, it will provide one audible tone, which is really just a warning that says, that says you've been off the chest for 10 seconds. Make a decision whether you're going to shock, no shock, or start the device back up. At 20 seconds, it will provide three audible tones, and at 30 seconds, it will be continuous audible tones. So your options at that point are either, if you have a pulse, hit the orange button and pause. If you're ready to start compressions again, you can hit the green button and start it back up. Or if you're to the point where you want to terminate your resuscitation, you can simply push the orange button. So a couple things I would just leave you with is that there's, there's really five differences that set us apart from our competition in the field. One of those is the size of the patient. According to our instructions for use, we get a 52-inch chest, a circumference chest inside of the platform or the life band. The second thing is that clinically, as I mentioned earlier, that we're moving near normal blood flow because we circumferentially squeeze the chest wall, comparably to a manual of 25 to 40 or a piston that's moving 30% blood flow. Thirdly, we talked about the resuscitation on the move. This device again allows you to just pick that patient up and twist them and turn them uh, however you need to to extricate that patient out of the, out of the uh, home. And then fourthly, the uh, load distribution is putting 2.8 pounds per square inch and we distribute that over 100 square inches. The human threshold we know is about 67 PSI and the piston driven is putting 25 PSI. And lastly, I would suggest to you that there are approximately 25 departments across the nation that have invested in the treatment of cardiac resuscitation and they are part of our Advanced Cardiac Resuscitation Consortium. Uh, some of these departments are seeing upwards of 60 to 70 percent ROSC on their cardiac arrest patients and they have doubled the national average in out-of-hospital survival. Thank you.